Okay, so you may be asking, what is Tbox? So Tbox is what's called a terminal multiplexer. So the way it works is when you open up, let's say Putty, for example, you are opening what is called a terminal emulator. And basically what that does is instead of actually sitting at a physical terminal and, you know, typing away because you want to be able to do it remotely, it emulates the terminal so you can actually interact with the computer from far away or even just on the local machine without having to enter the shell. So the way Tmux works is basically it will generate multiple instances of your terminal inside of your base emulator. So let's say you're using PuTTY. It's basically like using split screens, like the picture on the left where it splits apart so you can see multiple things at once. You may be asking, okay, why do you, would we want to use Tmux? So for one, it's fairly easy to use once you get used to it. Now I will admit, just like Vim, there is a bit of a learning curve. But once you get it, it's pretty easy. So the other reason is because it can improve your speed and efficiency. Rather than having to close out of whatever you're working on, open up the readme, then close out of that, go back to your code, then save it, go out of it, compile, then run it, then go back into your code and la da la la. It's much easier just to use people. Also, don't be this person. I've seen it at least multiple, a couple of times where what they will do is they will come here, right click on Putty, click Duplicate Session, then you have to re log in. And then let's say you're working on, let's say, the Pokemon assignment. Then you have to CD into Pokemon. Now you have it open. Now to be able to look at them side by side, you have to do this, and this, and then you have to go there, and do this. So let's say we want to to look at the readme and the code at the same time. So now I have to CD into Pokemon. Again, let's open up Vim in the main. Oh. Now we're there. Now you have to go back over here and then also open up the readme. Oh. Okay. That took quite a while. So using Tmux, we don't have to do it that way. There is a better way. Oh, oh. Yes, I do want to close this. So there is a couple of things that we should probably do before we actually start using Tmux. By default, Tmux doesn't really work that well with color. So let's fix that. The way we fix that is by creating a tmux config file, which I will show you other couple of fun things that you can do inside of it. We also have to edit our vimrc in order to get the coloring to work correctly inside of vim. And then we have to source both files, and then we can actually start using it. So let's go ahead and do that. So. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you are in your home directory. You can do that by just typing cd. Okay, and then what you want to do is you want to vim.tmux.conf. The conf stands for config. So I already have one, so it's not going to make a new file. But if you don't already have one, which you don't by default, it will create one for you. So the way to get 24-bit color to work, or just colors in general, is by adding these two lines of 
to your TMX config. So set dash G, which means for global, default terminal, tmux-256 color. And then the next line, set option dash SA, terminal dash overrides, is basically going to tell tmux which terminal you are using by default, so it knows which ones to overwrite. So once you add those two lines, what you want to do is you want to then right quit or just shift ZZ. And then what you want to do is you want to source, if I could spell it correctly. So U R C E D slash. And then you want to source that file. So dot tmux dot off. It would help if I could spell correctly. Wow. Okay. So even though that error message popped up, it does work. I promise. So the next thing we need to do. Yeah, I can. And if you guys have any questions, you guys can just post them in the chat. I have. So these are the two lines that you need to add to get color to work. I will take a screenshot of that and put it in the workshop as well. Good. So there are a couple other fun things that we can do. So if we go down quite a bit here. So there is a mouse mode, which will basically let you click on the different windows. I, however, don't recommend this because pasting can get weird. Because normally you would right click to paste, but that doesn't work as soon as you turn this. So it just gets a little bit weird. The other nice thing to have is to not have the TMUX yell at you, kind of like how Kearney has for uh, Vim. And yes, Rohan, you can. That's what these are right here. But I will get into those a little bit later. So by far, the one of the best things is to make sure everything quiet is quiet, because you do not want TMUX barking at you for some reason. Because no one ever wants that. The other thing you can do is you can set the colors for the borders and for the status bar, which you'll see in just a minute after we actually start opening it. So now that we have now that we're done with the TMUX config, let's go into the VimRC. Okay, I will reshow you. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to source. And then the pathway to the file. So in this case, it's the home directory slash dot tmux dot clump. Again, error, it's fine. So now if we instead go to, also by the way, is the font size uh, big enough for you guys? Okay, cool. just making sure. Okay, so now we're going to open up our VimRC. Oh, it would help if I... Oh, wait, typing wrong. Okay, hold on. So you want a vim dot vim RC. 
And so basically what you need to do is you need to find the line that says You need to find the line that says set term GUI colors. I can't remember if Kearney has it enabled by default or disabled by default. I believe it's disabled by default, but if it isn't, or if you turned it on, you need to make sure you turn it off. Otherwise, bin colors will not work with Tmux. So all you do to disable it, is you go to the beginning of the line and you add this question mark. Or this uh, double quote right here. Can everyone see that? So then after you do that, what you then need to do is you need to write it again. Same thing with the, as with the Tmux config. And then we need to source this as well. So again, it's source. And then the path to the file. So in this case, it's the tilde, which stands for your home directory, slash dot vim rc. And there we go. Again, there's another error. It's fine. It works anyways. OK. So now that we know how that works, now that we have it set up, let's actually figure out how to get into Tmux. So we have a couple of options. Option one is to start a new session, which we can do with either just typing tmux, or we can actually name the session that we are going to start into by using the command tmux space new space dash s, and then space double quotes, whatever you want to call it. Option two is attaching to an existing session. But before that, we need to actually have a session to attach to. So this set, option two will come into play later. And then what we need to do is we need to figure out how to get out of it once we get into it. Because again, similar to Vim, it can be a little bit different. So let's go back to the terminal and actually get into Tmux. So I'm going to use the second option, or the first option, to start a new session, but I'm going to actually name it. So the command for that is tmux new. Actually, first I'm going to kill server, basically to get rid of any instances of it that I already have open. So now I'm going to tmux space new, dash s, which stands for session, quote, and I'm just going to call it ACM. Did everyone see how I did that? Do I need to do it again? So default is spelled A-U-L-T, not U-A-L-T. And then Hawkwind, can you send a screenshot of the error that you were getting, please? It is a very strange 
Very strange thing. So when did that happen? Did that happen after you launched Tmux? Or did that happen after sourcing the file? Hawkman. After you did new. Okay. What exactly did you type? You typed Tmux new, correct? Okay, then it should be working. I don't know why it's saying that. That's an interesting one. Tmux is a part of Putty. So Tmux can run anywhere where you are logged into Kearney Server. You can also install it on separate. Linux operating systems, but it is a application inside of the terminal, very similar to how Vim is an application inside of the terminal. So Sims, does it work? That's the big question. Okay, great. So since I exited out, I'm going to open a new session again. Tmux new dash s quote ACM if I can type. And there we go. Okay. So now we're in. Let's talk about how to get out before we go into all of the things that it can do. So for option one, as we see in the slides, you just type exit and you will get out of the out of Tmux. Option two is a more interesting option, which again, like I say, Bernie may not like because it may be harder on the system. But we'll just have to see. But it is helpful if you ever run this on your own system or anything like that. So what it does is it will disconnect it, but save where you're at. So let's go look at how that works. So and like it say in the thing here, it works using a leader which I will go into more detail of what that is in just a minute. So for right now, let's just work on the exit. So we just type exit, and we're back into where we were. Now if I go back in, creating a new one, because I exited out of it completely, so I have no other Tmux uh, servers in so I'm back in here. Now let's talk about more of the commands. This is this is the fun stuff. So how do Tmux? Tmux uses what are called ported keyboard shortcuts, 
What does that mean, you may ask? This means that there is some leader shortcut before another shortcut to actually trigger the action. Tmux's leader, by default, is Control-B, but of course, like anything in Linux, this can be changed. So the way it works is you press Control-B, and then whatever the shortcut is after that. The reason we do this is so that way Tmux knows it's you're talking to it, instead of, let's say, talking to Vim, or to just Unix itself, or to anything else on your system. That's the reason for using the ported keyboard shortcuts. Because it simplifies the keyboard shortcuts that you actually need, instead of having to do, like, Control, Shift, Alt, Windows key, whatever the key is, right? That would be extremely difficult, and no one wants to do that. Another key to using Tmux is adapting your workflow. Instead of doing Shift ZZ in Vim, which will write and quit, what we want to do is we want to do colon W in order to leave the code open. That way we can see it while we are running the code or while we are running, while we are looking at the readme files or any other source code of that kind. So then here are a bunch of commands. So there's what is called panes. So right now we're just going to go over them. And then we will go into the terminal and actually use them. Uh, not really, Rohan. I will show you an example in just a minute once we actually start using these commands. So, but basically, what you need to know is that you can split Tmux into panes, which is like split screening on your monitor, like in Windows. There are windows, which would be the equivalent equivalent of like virtual desktops. And then there are sessions, which would be like almost like different users. Like if you logged out of one user and then logged into another one. And so this is a list of commands that we're going to go through. I just have them here. That way we can kind of look at them. But then I will actually go over them and how to use them and what they actually do. Another helpful commands. Yeah, I'll show you what Colin Debbie does in just a minute. And then other commands are also important, but don't fight that do not quite fit into those categories. So now let's go back over to the code, or to the terminal rather. And now let's start running these commands. Yes, this is being recorded. So, we want to press our leader key. Also, for anyone wondering, I use sticky keys. I am probably the one person that actually has a use for them and doesn't hate it. So what I do is I just press Control B, but for you, you would have to press them at the same time. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show a vertical split. So you do that by doing the leader key, which we did, Control-B. And then it is Shift-5. The, hold on, let me do this. It would help if I was on the correct window. So you do your leader key, Control-B, and then Shift-5. Does everyone see how we did that? So now we have two separate uh, terminal windows open in one window. So no more of that duplicate and logging back in and all of that, because that's a pain. So let's say I list out everything in my, well, I have a lot of stuff. So now let's say I wanted to go to the left, right? I wanted to go to the left uh, pane over there. So what you do is you do the leader key, which is control B, and then left arrow. And now we're over there. So now I can type over here and do whatever. So now I can go back and forth. 
So just two usually isn't enough. So my usual setup for while I'm in class or while I'm doing homework is I also open up the second, I split the right terminal into two. So the way we can do that is we can do a horizontal split. So we can do the leader key or control B and then the double quote. Does everyone see how that split like that? So now we can go up here, we can go down here, and we can go over here. So now I will show you basically the way that I use it, while also showing you a very useful uh, command that makes navigating between directories in all three panes very easy. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to get into command mode in Tmux. The way we do that is we do the leader key followed by colon. So now we're in the command mode, as you can see by that yellow bar that popped up at the bottom. So now if I type in set w, which I believe stands for set window, space, synchronize, dash, panes. And then once you're done typing your command, you press enter. So now, if you'll notice, as I type, it appears on all three of the panes that we have currently. So let's say I was going to work on Pokemon, right? So if I did control or CD Pokemon tab and then enter, and if I do control L, which clears the screen. So now we don't want to type on all three anymore, do we? Because now we're into the directory that we want. So there's no reason to be typing in all three. Because if I vim into main.cc and press enter, weird things out. So what we need to do is we need to unsynchronize the panes. The way we do that is we do control B, colon, and then you can go up just like in the normal terminal to your previous command. So if I do up arrow, it brings up the previous command that we just ran, and then enter, bam, here we go. So now I am in the leftmost thing. So we have a swap. So I'm just going to click abort. I'm going to go over there. Abort there as well. And so usually I have my code on the left. So I'm going to go up there and close out of it. Up. Q. Going back over. So now I'm going to open up Vim here. So bam, now we have our code open here, right? Which is very helpful. Yes, I have. And timed out. So now let's see what else I do. So I have this, I have the code open here. When I was working on the Pokemon, I also had the readme open up top. So let's vim into readme. Very helpful. And if I go down here, right here is where I usually run the code or run input test. So this is where I usually compile G main dot cc. It takes a second to compile. And then I usually run input tester. Or you're supposed to actually run it, but input tester is done. So input tester. And there we go. But if something breaks, it makes it very easy to be able to look at the code in real time and see, oh, that's a typo I made. Rather than having to, okay, run it. 
then vim into main.cc. We're going to open it read only anyways. Figure out what you did wrong. Make your changes. Get out of it. Then recompile. And then run input tester again. That takes a while, which is what you would have to do if you do it normally. But with Tmux, you can do it much quicker. Ha. So if we go back over here, this is where the colon w comes into play. So let's say I made a change. Let's say, I don't know, let's say I didn't. Let's say I initialize this, which you shouldn't do, but this is an example. So to make this change, what would you guys normally do? What would you guys do to write this? Save and compile. How would you save and compile? You would shift ZZ. Right. So let's see what happens if we shift ZZ. So now we're out of here, which kind of takes away the point of doing this, right? So this is where the other thing, the other way is going. So I'm just going to go back and do it. Now I'm going to change this back so it's actually initialized. Equals zero. Escape. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do colon and then w. This puts you into command mode for vim. And so what you do is you do colon w. Yes, it's okay. It's being recorded. So you do colon w, which stands for write. So we're going to write the file. So colon w. There we go. Now we come back over here. And now we recompile. And there we go. And now we can run input tester again. Does that make sense? It's kind of like, yeah. So shift ZZ, all it does is it writes and quits. So shift ZZ writes and quits. So colon W is only writing. So it's not actually quitting the file. So you can still have it open. Which is very helpful so you can multitask like this. Instead of having to pull up multiple windows of putty. Does that make more sense? Okay, so now let's figure out how we can, let's say we just want to focus on the code, right? We don't need anything else open right now, but we don't want to exit out and then do all that. So we, we just want to focus on the code. So let's go back over to this pane. And so the command we're going to do now is control B followed by Z. Z stands for zoom. And now it's filling up the entire window. All of the other, they're still there, but now we're just focused on this, which can make it very helpful if you're trying to show someone, like a tutor or a kernel or whoever, if you're trying to show them like a problem in your code, and now it's not as distracting, or for yourself, if you're just mainly in the writing mode, and you're not, you know, in the debugging mode where you're saving, compiling, and running it back to back very quickly. This is a very helpful feature, so you can focus on just reading it. So let's say, okay, we've done all our writing. It's time to actually do this stuff. 
So again, you're going to do colon W again. And then to unzoom, we're just going to do run the zoom command again. Does that make sense to everybody? Very sick, indeed. Uh, which part? Which part do you want me to repeat? Yeah, okay. So, let's say we wanted to zoom in on the left pane, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to do the leader key, followed by... Z for zoom. So we'll pop it up like this. And then to go back, we just do the leader key again, followed by Z. Make sense? You got it? Great. Awesome. Okay. Okay, so now we have this, right? So let's say you wanted to work on like a different project where you wanted to pull up just stuff for me Instead of closing out of this, let's just create another window. So the way we can do that is we can do control B followed by C for create. Even on a laptop, it is great. So if we do control B followed by C, as you can see, down here, we have another window. We have another thing that popped up, right? You want to see that? So now what we can do is we can do the whole thing over again. But let's say, so that we're going to work on deal or no deal. I know it's already done, but deal or no deal, CD and actually, you know what, let's just do this. Let's do it this way. So we're gonna do our, our split. We're gonna do our split again. And then we're going to synchronize the panes. Then we're going to CD into deal or no deal. Then we're going to clear the screen. And then now we are going to unsynchronize so we can actually do stuff. So you know how I was doing control B and arrow keys to go to navigate around the windows? You guys have to hang in there, right? So the vertical split was, let's exit, hold on, exit, exit. So to do a vertical split, you do control B and then it's shift five. That really is very unintuitive, but again, you can change it. I don't have it changed because I just got used to it, but I know like Hazleton remapped it to something. And I know a lot of people that use Tmux. So, so then to do a horizontal split, you do the control V and then double click. Any questions so far? We good? To keep going? Okay. So you guys have the 
the hang of doing the navigation, right? Between the, the panes, doing control B and then the arrow keys, right? You guys got that pretty good? I'm going to switch to using my custom uh, keyboard shortcut that I made because it's a little bit less typing for me. Because to do that for me is one, two, three keystrokes. Whereas I have it set. So does everyone know that in Vim you can do H, J, K, and L instead of arrow keys when you're in the command mode? So in Vim, let's just open that real quick. Let's just Vim. Uh, what can I open here? Let's open Rainfall. Rainfall. And bam. Open it read only. Oh, that's why. That's why you always make sure your panes are unsynchronized. Escape. So now we have this open. So you normally you would use your up and down arrows and then left and right and all that. Okay. Instead, to keep your fingers just on the home row, you can use K for up, J for down, H for left, and L for right. Does that make sense? Can you guys even see? Yeah, you can, right? You should be able to. Okay. The reason I'm showing you that is because I have it mapped to where if I just press Alt and then one of these letters, it will move in that direction for the windows. So I have it set to where if I do Alt and then L, it goes over one. So just much quicker for me. So I'm going to use that from now on if everyone's okay with that. Yes, there is. Brian, and I will. Uh, share that with everyone towards the end. Because it's a lot. Oh, Brian. I think it's, yeah. it's a lot. I know it's a lot, but I do want to show enough of it for you guys to have a basis. And since it's being recorded, you guys can always go back and watch it again. So, but like I said, I'm going to use the, my, uh, custom shortcuts for this part, just because it saves me a little bit of time. And it's not me having to stretch all the way over here and then all the way over here. Okay. So now we're looking at this. What's in rainfall again? I don't remember. Okay, so we have a readme. So let's open up the readme. Just like we did before. And then let's see the into it again. Rainfall. And let's run with a test reader. Hey, look that up fast. Okay. So let's say we want to go back to the other window, right? So the way to do that is you see the number next to these right here, how this one says zero and this one says one. So what we do is we do our leader key. Remember by default it's control B. And then let's say we want to go 
to the first one that we made, you do zero. We want to go back to the other one, control B, one. Right? So let's say you have a whole bunch of these open. And it's kind of confusing which one is which, right? Like it's, it, it's hard to remember which one is which. So let's go back to the first one. So one thing you can do is you can do control B followed by a comma to rename the window. So what do you guys want to call this one? Remember, this is the one where we had Pokemon open. What should we call this? Pokemon? I don't know how spaces work. Let's just do one word, Pokemon. So we do that, and then we press enter, and bam, you see how it's now named? Now it's much easier to remember which one is which. So now let's name this one. Should we name this one Rainfall, since this is Rainfall? So now it makes it much easier to remember which one is which. What should we open up here? Any ideas? Any ideas? Did you learn how to do? Okay. Image processing. Okay, well, we have multiple other ones, so we can open up image processing in one. So let's open up deal or no deal. So let's do this, this, set w synchronized panes, cd deal or no deal, bam, clear the screen. Unsynchronized, very important. Let's do, let's open up. We main. There was a readme, correct? Let's see, CA. Yeah, let's open up the readme as well. Readme, perfect, down. There we go. So now let's name this one. Deal or no deal? Three, let's open up uh, image processing here. Which filter do you guys want to see, midwise? Filter one, two, or three? Three? Okay. Filter three dot cc. What should we open up up here? What do you want to open up here? What do you guys think would be useful? 
Yeah, we can. So I'll say let's open up filter two. Filter two. And then down here is where I usually run it. So if we do, uh, I gotta remember how to run this now. A seventy. I think it was no. Rat. Rat. Eight hundred dot jpeg. And then it's key. Five. Now we run it. Takes a while because it's a big it's a big uh, image. I mean, time let's rename it. So let's make it image pro. Oops, that's It is still running. Like I said, it takes a very long time because it is a 4K image. So, but let's say we wanted to resize the windows, right? That's a very useful thing. So, the way that we do that is we do Control B, oh, Control B, and then you hold down Control. And you use your arrow keys like that, except it doesn't work too well with sticky keys. But for you guys, if you just do the control B, let go, and then press control, and then the arrow keys, it will work very well. Also, it's still running through filter. That takes a while. So does that kind of make sense to you guys? And now we can hop around very quickly. Control B zero, control B one, control B three, drop to zero. And now we have them named, so we know exactly what's going on. There we go, it finally it finally finished. 99 seconds. That's quite a while. But does, does this kind of help you guys see how useful this can be? And how it can improve your workflow and make it a lot quicker? So, there's a couple more things we can do. So let's say we wanted to disconnect, right? Like I talked about earlier, so we can reattach to it. So the way we do that is we do control B followed by D and that disconnects. So it's still running. So if I ran who, oh boy, which shows you a list of who's on the server currently. As you can see, there's a lot of people on right now because you guys are all using Tmux, which is awesome. So you can see how my name pops up several times. And that's because my Tmux is still running in the background. So even though I only have one instance that I'm actually using right here, there is still several are running because Tmux stays in place. That's the reason why uh, Fernie may not may not like this. Let's actually see how it's doing. So you can run HCOP, which is basically the equivalent of um, 
Task Manager, but for Linux. So we can kind of see like just how many processes we're using. So if you scroll down here, you can see, you know, Sayer using a lot, Mayer, Talkman. All of you guys are using a whole bunch of. It won't be a problem, Hazelton? Okay, that's cool. I had no idea. So let's say we wanted to go back into the session we were just in, right? So what we do there is we do tmux space a. The a stands for attach. So now, as you can see, we are right back where we were. So if I do the control bd again, and let's say uh, I completely disconnect from the server. Right now I'm back on my home, on my uh, own PC. See how that's that's not Kearney's stuff anymore. That's that's mine. So if I connect back into it, that's a uh, shortcut that I made. An alias. I log back in. Okay. Also, I just realized I just gave you all my password. Oh well. So now if I do the tmux A, again, we are right back where we are. So you can completely log out on the server, come back a couple days later, and be pick up right where you just left off. How cool is that? Exactly. So now let's say we wanted to look at a list all of the things that we have open, right? What we can do is we can do Control B and then W for Windows. So as you can see, we have one session open that has five windows in it. Each of these windows has three panes open apart from this one. And then once you're in here, you can either press the number that is in the left next to the parentheses, or you can just press on it. This comes in handy. If let's say, so we have an ACM one, what I usually do is I also have a session tmux new dash s. Yes, it does. Quote, I usually have one for class that I have open with my usual setup, like this. So if I CD into class time, week, I don't even have the most recent week yet, but week 12 and let's say, uh, let's say Wednesday. So if I have this open, notice that it's in a completely separate session, so none of our other windows pop up. So let's say we had one for lecture, right? Where we have whatever. Pretty zoom that day. Oh, there's nothing even in here. 
But let's say I made a main.cc. Whatever. So I could colon. Actually, let's let's make a program real quick. Hold on. So let's say uh, we just see out. Hello, world. So now what we need to oh, it would help if I added a a character and a semicolon. Okay, so now we're gonna colon write w for write. We're gonna come over, and then we're going to g plus plus main.cc, pilot, and now we can run it. There we go. Or we can make one for lab time or whatever. You see the possibilities. So now, if I do the control B W again, notice here that we have another session called class. But all these other ones are still here. So if we want to switch to them, Let's say, oh, we need to go working on Pokemon in class. Okay, so you switch from your class session. Oh, let's open Pokemon. And bam, now you're back to working on Pokemon. And so another way to close one of the panes is you can either type exit like this or you can do control B X for close. And then they'll ask you, do you actually want to kill it? Let's say yes. So I think those are the main keyboard shortcuts that I wanted to go over. Like I said, they're here again. So are there any questions? Pull this down so that way Gordon can see the specials as well. How long did it take me to get used to the interface? Uh, I am not going to lie to you, it took a while. Just like Vim. I'm sure Vim took a while for most people to get used to as well. This is also like learning Vim again, but it's very helpful. And if you can get it mastered, it is extremely beneficial. And you will see the returns from learning learning it later. And there's also many more commands as well than I showed. And I know I showed a lot. Exactly, yes. So Tmux is one of those things that I've seen in my tutorial center a while ago, and I saw a couple people just using like I like what I did with the putty, where they were right clicking, duplicating, and I was just like, oh, I know there's a better way. So that's why I wanted to do this uh, workshop to be able to show you guys the better options of ways to do things, so we, uh, it can save time and help us be more efficient. So I said I would show you guys a couple of resources that I use and have used to help memorize. So let's see if there's any more questions first. And, and now Hackerman. Yes, yes, definitely Hackerman. We've been to a little HTOP earlier, so you know. 
definitely hack it in. So now let's show a couple of uh, cheat sheets. I'm just copy this. So this is the main one that I have used. For the, when I was first learning it, I had it open like at all times. Um, so this it will basically go over everything we just did. So bam, how to open a session, how to attach to a session. You, you can get crazy with it. How to detach from a session. This is the window stuff that I was showing. Close the current window, which is something I didn't show. Previous window, next window, which is also something I didn't show. So like I said, there's a bunch, but I wanted to give you guys a pretty good basis. And then same thing with Vim. If you learn the very basics, which would be like the vertical split, the horizontal split, and kind of being able to navigate around them. And then you slowly start adding some of the more complex things. That's the best way of learning it. So then we have stuff for panes. Also synchronized panes. If there's any of the commands that I use the most that like I was like, what a relief this is, it was this one. Because imagine having to go to each pane and CD into a different directory. That seems extremely agonizing and just terrible, frankly. There's a whole copy mode that I haven't even used very much, but it is definitely there. And so this is the other uh, link that you can use. It's actual Tmux uh, wiki on GitHub, which I believe Kearney posted in the in the uh, assignment for uh, this, but I'll paste it here anyways. So I think the only other thing uh, that I should show you guys is how to do some of the custom uh, keyboard tricks. Because I know Rohan was asking about the You're welcome, uh, Raphael. I'm glad you were able to come. Let's go ahead and make another window. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my dot tmux dot com. Okay. So one benefit to this is you see that I have mouse mode on. One helpful thing that you can do, and that is sometimes helpful. Especially if, for me, because switching between a mouse and a keyboard takes a couple of seconds. So sometimes you just need to do something in the mouse real quick. So you can actually just click on the different windows here. If you have mouse mode on. You can just click on the different windows. Very helpful. So these are the shortcuts that I made to allow me to do my alt and left, right, and all that. So M is the meta key, which is alt by default. This keyboard shortcut doesn't seem to work for some reason. Actually, you know what, let's see if it does. Oh, and I just realized why it does. 
So this would be uh, control V control Y. Yeah, that's so let's test that out. I actually don't know if it works. Alt left Q Alt here Alt up Alt Q There we go. Okay, it does work. Very useful. So the other thing that you can do inside of it is you can also like I mentioned earlier, the quiet. And then obviously the favorite part is uh, making it look nice. So right here is how you customize the colors. So this line right here will affect the colors for this line down here, which I'm sure makes much more sense to you guys now. And then these two lines here affect the border between panes. So if we go back to something, you can see right here, see how it's red? That indicates that this pane is the active pane. Whereas if I click here, notice how the borders change. And if I click here, it changes to indicate that this one is the active pane. It's very... Is there any other questions that you guys have or anything else you guys want me to? Uh, I believe I'm going to send it to Kearney, and then Kearney is going to upload the uh, video to his YouTube channel. That way you guys can rewatch it, and the people who weren't able to make it can also watch it. Okay, well, if there is uh, nothing more, I am going to stop the recording. But if any of you guys do need help, you can stick around and I can help for just a little bit. Have a good one.